Magic School Bus. Inside Ralphie, a book about germs. Having a teacher like Miss Fizzle can make a kid nervous. Strange things always seem to happen when she's around. Take last week when our class was supposed to do a live TV show for Fizzle News Network. Ralphie was going to come up with an exciting story for us to cover. But here it was, broadcast day, and Ralphie was nowhere to be found. Everyone was getting worried. We can't do it without him, Wanda said in a panic. She stared at the door, hoping Ralphie would race in. But he didn't. Instead, the telephone rang. Oh, yes, I see. He's sick. Poor Ralphie, Mrs. Fizzle said into the phone. Of course he must stay in bed. Carlos tried to get Mrs. Fizz Fizzle's attention. What about broadcast day, he asked. Why, we're taking the school to him, Miss Fizzle replied, as she hung up the phone. To the bus, she ordered. Here we go again. As we boarded the bus, we began to get worried. This seemed an awful lot like Miss Fizzle's strange field trip ideas. Miss Fizzle, are you sure this visit isn't a field trip? Arnold asked finally. Miss Fizzle just grinned. Why do you think, Arnold? I think I should have stayed home. Miss Fizzle closed the door and turned the ignition. Boy, was Ralphie about to be surprised. Ralphie was home in bed getting to be ready to take his medicine. How can anything that smells like grape shoe polish help my body get well? Ralphie asked his mother, who just happened to be a doctor. It will if you take one teaspoon three times a day, she replied. Now I have to get to see a new patient. Grandma's downstairs if you need anything. I'll check in later. Ralphie knew his mom wanted him to rest. But how could he rest, knowing he'd let everyone down on broadcast day? He jumped out of bed and went over to his computer. Maybe if he came up with a really good idea for the news show, he could phone it in to the classroom. But even walking over to the computer made him tired. Just then, Ralphie saw all of us standing right there on his sidewalk. He looked very surprised. Hello down there. Hello up there. We followed Miss Fizzle straight up to Ralphie's bedroom. We came to do a broadcast day, Wanda told Ralphie. What a great idea, Ralphie exclaimed. We followed Miss Fizzle straight up to Ralphie's bedroom. We came to do a broadcast day, Wanda told Ralphie. What a great idea, Ralphie exclaimed. Now and then, I do have them, Miss Fizzle laughed. <coughs> <coughs> Ralphie's cold was getting worse. You'd better take it easy, Ralphie, said Miss Fizzle. Your body is telling you to slow down. But Miss Fizzle, I can't. We have a show to do. What does my body know anyway, Ralphie asked. That's when Miss Fizzle got that look on her face, the one that makes us nervous. It knows a lot about the detection and rejection of infection, Ralphie. Inside you, at this moment, there is action, adventure, excitement. Ralphie's on a pony. Get it? He's a little horse. Carlos, your jokes are making us sick. <laughs> the Frizz ordered all of us back on the bus. Suddenly, we were getting smaller. Helicopter blades whirled over our heads. The magic school bus had become a magic school helicopter. What's going on? Ralphie shouted over the noise. We're here to get the inside story, answered Miss Fizzle. 
Seat belts, everyone. Miss Fizzle called back to us. Ralphie, say ah. Ralphie opened his mouth wide. We flew right down his throat. It was red and swollen. The bus must have tickled going down because Ralphie coughed <coughs> hard. The bus flew back out, out of his mouth. What's going on? Whoa! We had to find another way to get inside Ralphie's body. I've got it! Ralphie cried out excitedly. Look at this! He peeled off a bandage to show us a cut on his leg. We could enter through it, but the bus had to be even smaller to dive into a teeny tiny cut. Hey, it's a short cut. Get it? Short cut? Carlos. We were inside Ralphie, but we were nowhere near his sore throat. Could we travel through his bloodstream to get to his sore throat? asked Dorothy Ann. Absolutely, answered Miss Fizzle. We definitely did not do this at my old school. Maybe I should go to your old school. Ralphie watched us on his TV as we floated along in a thin, clear liquid. Is that my blood? Ralphie asked. I thought blood was red. That stuff is clear. The liquid part of the blood is clear, Miss Fizzle explained. So what are those red things, Ralphie asked. Dorothy Ann opened her notebook. According to my research, they're called red blood cells. And the white ones are called white blood cells. Red blood cells carry oxygen to all parts of the body, Keisha added, while white blood cells search out and destroy germs. Platelets help the body heal scrapes and cuts. I'm seeing myself from the inside out. Just then, Ralphie's mother came back to check on him. That's when she spotted us on TV. What's that you're watching, she asked. It's remarkably realistic. Ralphie had to think fast. He couldn't let his mother know where the class really was. Those are just cheap TV special effects. Look, you can even see the wires, he said. The bus jerked to a, to a stop. We're in the throat, Miss Fizzle called out. It's time for some on-the-spot reporting. Keisha and Carlos took one camera. Phoebe and Arnold took another. They quickly scrambled off the bus. Which way? This way to the infection. No way. Look at that, folks. Have we got us some action, Carlos said in his best news reporter voice. Those yellow-green balls are alive. They're destroying that wall. The yellow-green balls were bacteria cells. They were attacking Ralphie's throat. The bacteria were the bad guys that were making Ralphie sick. According to my research, bacteria are germs, Dorothy Ann explained. Once inside our bodies, they can make us sick. Hmm, this show is very realistic. No wonder why I'm sick. Back at the scene of the infection, Carlos noticed a lot of white blood cells. The white blood cells attacked the bacteria. The battle was on, and for a moment, it seemed as though the white blood cells would win. Then the bacteria began to divide. There were four, then eight, then more and more. There were too many bacteria for the white blood cells to battle on their own. As he watched the action on TV, Ralphie got scared. How could my body lose? I don't think you should be watching this, Ralphie's mom said with concern. She got up to leave. 
your body needs to save its strength so it can use its energy to battle those bacteria. Believe me, you need rest. Oh no, I feel worse. The bacteria were everywhere. The reporters found themselves stuck in the middle of the battle. Ralphie, where's our backup support? Dorothy Ann shouted. Be backup support? Ralphie said weakly. Where do I get that? It's already on its way, said Miss Fizzle calmly. Just then, a river of purple fluid washed past the bus. Looks like grape shoe polish, Carlo said. But it wasn't grape shoe polish. It was the medicine Ralphie had taken earlier. The medicine worked side by side with the white blood cells to destroy the bacteria. It's destroying more bacteria, Tim cheered. The medicine is giving the white blood cells a chance. Just then, a white blood cell sprayed antibodies all over the bus. It's the antibody's job to mark bacteria. That's how the white blood cells know what to attack. Ralphie's white blood cells are doing such a good job, Miss Fizzle announced. They now recognize us as enemies, too. Enemies? Arnold gulped. But we know what white blood cells do to enemies. Miss Fizzle smiled. And they'll try to destroy us, too. Ah, the wonder of the human body. Now we were really scared. We cried for Ralphie to help us, but he was fast asleep. Hmm, in my old school, we were only afraid of the lunch meat. Don't worry, class, Miss Fizzle said. In order to destroy us, Ralphie's white blood cells will have to catch us. She put her foot on the bus's gas pedal. We zoomed through Ralphie's body. The bus made a sharp turn. Miss Fizzle spoke into the broadcast microphone. Miss Fizzle here with an update on the Ralphie story, she said. To escape the white blood cells, we have left Ralphie's throat and are now headed up his nasal passages. His what? Keisha at whispered to Dorothy Ann. Dorothy Ann flipped through her science book. According to my research, that means we're up his nose. Well, there were a lot of places we would have rather been, but at least we were away from those white blood cells. We're up Ralphie's nose? Leak! It was getting late. We had to get back to school. But we were stuck in Ralphie's nose. There was only one thing to do. Ralphie was going to have to sneeze us out. Ah, 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 choo! Fasten your seatbelts. The bus flew out of Ralphie's nose and landed softly, safely, on a soft pile of socks. So Ralphie, Keisha said, shoving her news microphone into Ralphie's face. What do you have to say about today's exciting adventure? I'm sorry my body made such a mess of it, Ralphie croaked. Your body's built to keep out things like a bunch of germs or a bus of kids, Wanda explained to him. Okay, Ralphie agreed. But what about when you almost got gobbled up by my white blood cells? The memory made Arnold shiver. Only because your body thought we were bacteria, he said. That's the inside story, Ralphie, Miss Fizzle said. Then she ordered everyone back on the bus. It's time to let Ralphie rest. We may have won the battle, she said, but Ralphie's still fighting.